Good morning, folks. We've got the top science news and a rundown of terrestrial and solar activity. That brighter, crackling central region is lacking sunspots here, so let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star and 193 angstroms. We can see that big, incoming coronal hole, not quite at center longitudes. Coming to the solar wind next, we see the plateau continue but slightly decreased in intensity and geomagnetic conditions are finally quieting back down. We won't have long to wait as magnetic connection to this opening will be early this week and mid to late week its solar wind will arrive. Couple volcanoes to note. A gung erupted in the very early hours this morning and so did one of the volcanoes on the Kamchatka Peninsula of Russia. Want to quickly mention that while snow will continue blanketing the north in the U.S., We've got severe weather potential in the southeast tonight. Eyes open there. Let's move to the planets. Mercury is up first. Interesting piece on its glacial polar craters. I'll remind everyone that while they know ice is at the poles and it's too hot at the equator, but six years after learning this, we still haven't heard the first word about a liquid boundary between them. Speaking of water on terrestrial planets, Mars has thousands of layers of ice just below the dusty red surface, and this team believes they have found signatures of an active hydrology on contemporary Mars. The evidence is compelling. Interesting piece out of the AGU on snowfall during the Younger Dryas, with implications for the future as well, whereby it is actually an extreme snowfall itself that begins to tip the scales and derail the climate into a major change. The top story today comes in the solar forcing category, Coronal hole streams are an underappreciated aspect of space weather, especially in how they can produce geomagnetic storms without a single sunspot. In our layman's textbook, these authors delivered two of the top citations on solar forcing of cyclone activity, and today we learn there's more. Direct influence of the solar wind on the storms occurs via a coupling with the magnetosphere, which inherently affects the ionosphere, the L-shell magnetic fields that dive down at lower latitudes, and of course, the global electric circuit which directly connects all pressure cells on the planet with the ionosphere and magnetosphere. The effect is immediate. Learn more in our book aimed at taking all the relevant solar forcing of weather and climate and putting it into a format that has been rated high school reading level, so it's consumable. In yesterday's website podcast, we ran 80 minutes total talking about a bit of dystopia and then the solar micronova possibility. Of course, we'll have a panel on that topic at Observing the Frontier 2019, more information, if you need it, can be found at observatoryproject.com. Get tickets at otf.cells.com. We've got your wind maps, followed by shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.